Hello and welcome! This is Microsoft Flight Simulator and this is the Phoenix Airbus A320. And in today's episode I would like to talk to you about weather radar and specifically on how to use it to avoid bad weather. Now right now we don't actually have a proper weather radar in Microsoft Flight Simulator but if we believe the talk of Asobo and all the add-on developers it shouldn't be too far away before we get one so I thought maybe this is a topic we should be talking about. Okay so without further ado let's get started. Okay, so let's look at a scenario that is very common, especially now during the summertime. So we are flying along and right ahead of you is a thunderstorm and it's essentially blocking our track. So the question is, what do you do? Do you go left or do you go right or do you do something else? And which mode should you use on the A320 to avoid this thunderstorm? Well, the first question you need to ask yourself is where is the wind coming from? So let's just say the wind is coming from the right and therefore blowing this thunderstorm to the left. The golden rule is that you should always avoid thunderstorms on the upwind side, not on the downwind side. We're going to be looking at that in more detail in a moment. So in this case, it would make sense to simply turn to the right. So you stay upwind and the thunderstorm is blown away from you. So if you have a waypoint further down the line that would cause the aircraft to perform a turn to the right then you can obviously ask for a direct. If not another option would be to simply perform an offset track. So you go to the flight plan page, you do an offset, you say how many miles to the left or right and then you fly that. Of course, all of this needs to be coordinated with ATC. The main thing I really want to point out though is that these two options are tracks. Now I'm pretty sure all of you know the difference between track and heading, but just to repeat very briefly, a track essentially means the aircraft is following a line above the ground, regardless of the wind, and a heading is it's just flying in a direction, and if there's wind, it gets blown off track. So the uh, track that it draws above the ground is almost irrelevant. And this is very important. So if you do this, if you fly an offset track, the aircraft will follow that line above the ground. And what that means is it will compensate for the wind and the thunderstorm is actually going to be blown away from you. So this will be a very good way to avoid this particular thunderstorm. But what if you cannot turn to the right? Either there are even more thunderstorms or maybe you're already in the descent and there's some terrain. Well, in that case, you have no choice. You need to go downwind of the thunderstorm. So in this case, we have to turn left. And once again, the choice is between a direct, if possible, an offset track, and maybe a heading. Now here I've drawn what it would look like to fly downwind on an offset track. Now the problem with that you may be able to see is that the thunderstorm will be blown towards us. So this is something you need to allow for and maybe increase the distance between you and the thunderstorm. However, there's also another option. And that option is to simply say we fly a heading. So if you have to go downwind of the thunderstorm, a heading actually makes a lot of sense because if you turn in a heading, so in this case, I don't know, this looks like um, 350, 345, something like that, you will be blown at the same speed by the wind as the thunderstorm, meaning the relative distance between you and the thunderstorm will always be the same, doesn't matter what you're flying, which direction you're flying, because the aircraft is just flying a heading. It's not trying to keep a certain track above the ground. And so this can actually make a lot of sense if you're downwind of a thunderstorm, because the distance between you and the thunderstorm should always stay constant. And it will give you a good idea about how far away from the thunderstorm you will pass the center of the cloud. 
Now that we understand the difference between avoiding a thunderstorm with a track and a heading, I would like to show you some real world examples. Now if you watch this on a big screen, please apologies for the poor quality. Uh, this is essentially just my mobile phone taking a picture of what I saw on that day, but I felt that real world photographs can actually make for very good examples. So in this particular example, you can see that our flight plan route would take us straight through these thunderstorms. We decided to go for a heading. So you can see that by the straight line here coming out of the aircraft. And we were then flying sort of in between those two yellow dots. Obviously, you, with these kind of maneuvers, you need to be very careful. The weather radar is not perfect. So it's very important to look outside and to see what you can actually visually see outside the cockpit window. If it is nighttime, in this case it was daytime, we would not fly this kind of maneuver because outside it's just black and we are not 100% sure what this would look like. So we would basically avoid the whole thing altogether. But on that day, I remember the two thunderstorm clouds seemed far apart. There was nothing behind them, just a few rain clouds. So we felt comfortable on flying through in between them. We did this with a heading and the reason being that that way the distance between the aircraft and the two clouds we're flying in between will always remain the same. In this example, again, we decided to fly a heading. Once again, we found ourselves between two big clouds, although the one on the right is mostly rain. The actual cell, as you can see, is further away. You can see the initial flight plan route, which would have taken us pretty close through all these thunderstorms. We didn't feel comfortable with that, so we requested a heading. To the right, we stayed on this heading till pretty much to Geneva, you can see that point there, and then we performed a turn to the left. So once again, heading makes sense because you want to have a relative distance to all these clouds and you want it to stay constant. Here another really interesting example. So you can see the wind in the upper left corner, it's coming slightly from the left. So you can see we have two dotted green lines. The one that goes past Nakop was the original flight path. We then looked at an offset track, which is the one to the left, uh, which yeah, didn't make much sense because that that's what we were offered by ATC, but we didn't like it. So we ended up flying a heading, which is the solid green line. The dotted yellow line is simply us putting in a direct to a waypoint. And once that dotted yellow line is no longer in an area where we feel uncomfortable, we can tell ATC we are now able direct wherever. I think this was uh, Mike Juliet Victor. So this is one example where you just try out different things, see how it all works out, see what that looks like in relation to the cloud, and then you make a plan. So in this case, we had a plan A, a plan B, a plan C, and a plan, plan D. And that's generally not a bad idea. And to finish off two examples that are not so nice. So here you can see we're still on the ground. We are on the departure runway. And this was the picture we had ahead of us. And we decided not to take off. Uh, I mean, it has to be said, it was nighttime and ahead of us, we saw nothing but lightning. We heard thunder, we had a bit of hail. We just did not feel comfortable taking off uh, in this weather. So we left the runway, taxied back to the gate and uh, decided to wait with the passengers until all of this weather uh, would have moved on. And that, of course, is another option you have as a pilot. You don't have to take off. If you're not comfortable, if it looks like this and you really don't see any way of how you could avoid all of this weather, then simply say we are not comfortable, we are unable and ATC will guide you back to the gate. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, that night not a single aircraft took off. Everyone went on to the runway switched on the weather radar, played around with it and said, nope, we are not taking off. And then we all taxied back to the gate. So very quick summary. 
Track means that the thunderstorm will move a relative to you. Heading means that you will move with the thunderstorms. Look at the wind, look at your flight path, look at terrain, make sure you create a good picture in your head, look at other thunderstorms as well, they are usually not alone, and make a plan in your head and then communicate that to ATC. Normally they will support you, sometimes they will say, sorry, that is not possible. It has happened to me, and if that happens, make sure you have a plan B in your head as well. And that is the end of the video. I hope you found it useful, I hope you found it interesting, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, all the best, bye bye.